ladies and gentlemen, it should be about time for us to have a scrawler box video, but I don't know where my scrawler box is for this month. It's supposed to be in the mail. Who knows where it is? So instead, we are doing a random creature design video. I follow lots of artists who do random creature designs. I'm a very big fan of random creature designs. I recorded myself pulling the random creatures, I thought, out of a box, but I don't know where that footage went. So the words I did pull were unicorn, lunar moth, and urban. The first thing I did is I sat down and I found some inspiration images. I kind of had an idea in my head what I wanted to do. Then I went to my digital program and put my references together and started sketching out some ideas. I really wanted to do something a little more specific when it comes to composition for this one, um, just because I've been teaching it in class a lot lately and I really do need to focus more on it. I try to do when I do creature design lately is I really want to put the creatures in an environment to kind of have a situation going on. All my life I've been really bad at just drawing monsters floating in space and I, I want to grow up past that. So I knew I wanted to do an alleyway. I kind of like the idea of, you know, cats uh, in like cartoons you have the alley cats and they're the hiding in boxes and sitting on trash cans and all of that. And that was my first idea. Uh, with the unicorn moth. To do some contrast with the unicorn moth, I actually designed other moth things. So I have my unicorn moth, and then I was actually going to have kind of like these alley cat, more dirty, standard looking moths. And they came out really adorable. I originally was going to have the unicorn moth sitting on a trash can and everyone looking up at it, but I couldn't get the composition to look how I wanted it. And originally all the moth creatures were going to have six legs, but again, could not get that to work out how I want it. So instead I went for the standard four legs, kept the kind of bug-like faces and the moth ears. I drew it out digitally and then I roughly traced it onto paper and then went back through and darkened everything up and started penciling everything. I went through several different ideas when it came to the location of the cat moths and the other stuff around it because I wasn't sure how big I wanted them or I wanted them to be. Originally I was going to have them very very close to the viewer and just seeing kind of like the back of their head but I felt like that would take up too much of the composition so I wound up pushing them back and having them posed around kind of a wooden crate. I really wanted this kind of like surprised what is this stranger kind of look to their body language. Inking this was really nice. I tried to be very loose with how I inked with the fuzziness of everything. I really wanted to make these caterpillars look floofy and not so much silky. You can see my hair poke in and out of frame in the corner several times. I did wind up cropping a good bit out of the top of this picture. I, whenever I started uh, penciling, I didn't want to move what I'd already drawn, but I did realize that there was a little too much space at the top. I did go through very carefully with a ruler to make sure a lot of my perspective lines were mostly good. I mean, they're not perfect, but they're a lot straighter than I would normally do freehand. And of course then I went through and inked completely freehand, so a lot of the straightness was gone. But I think it helped add to the just general texture of the piece. I love painting this. It took a long time and a lot of different layers. I wanted to get all the colors down. I knew I wanted to do a night scene. I had this idea in mind of a dark city street, urban environment, uh, with the, the cat moths that normally live there, and the almost intrusion of this unicorn lunar moth creature that's very mystical and magical, especially in comparison to like the other moths and the like brown colors. Uh, having kind of like a tabby cat, but like standard moth with the darker brown stripes kind of feeling to them. And I really liked the juxtaposition between something that looks like it very much belongs in an urban environment and something that looks like it doesn't as much. And I know that's a little in contrary of having pulled urban for a theme 
but I like to think that the Lunar Moth unicorn does exist normally. It's not a forest thing. It does come in and out of urban environments. It's just not often seen, and I kind of like the idea of it being, you know, special when you do see it, when, when you do come across it. Almost like an urban myth that has some truth behind it. I've always had a lot of trouble with diving into deep dark tones with my paintings. I'm not... I'm not super confident with my darks, and this was me really trying to push that, because I really wanted this to be a night scene. I mean, we're talking about moths here, and I really wanted there to be like a really nice glow coming from the lunar moth horn. So I found myself just doing like layer after layer after layer, and even after I've finished the watercolor, I go over yet again with a layer of marker just to really try to keep it dark and cool. I did definitely use uh, masking fluid with this because I wanted to really keep a uh, brightness and a lightness. I kind of did it around the eyes and the faces of the moths and especially just in spots around the horn because I did want to have this magic glowing feeling. I also added it to the, the puddle to keep too many colors from mixing in there so I can hopefully keep it light. But I also think I had expected to do more darker washes than I really wound up doing. I do plan on taking the line art from this. I remembered to stop and scan it. And it will be available as a coloring sheet downloadable for my patrons on Patreon because I have some of those now and I need to give them things. So if you want to color this yourself, become a Patreon, patron, Pat my patron, patron on my Patreon. As always, removing masking fluid is fun because it's like the adult version of peeling glue off your hands in elementary school because, you know, you're a liar if you say you've never done that. Or you're allergic to glue. Could be either one. Painting in the glow was a lot of fun. I was using the green from the character and adding yellow and brightness, adding yellow highlights on the ground and on the other characters, and just really trying to make everything look bright and shiny and pretty and cool. Usually when I do shading, I like to stick to my uh, watercolor magenta color pencil. I don't know why, I feel like I have more control. I feel like I have more control over the shading when I use that, even though, you know, it completely changes color when you get it wet. Um, but it just gives me, gives me a little bit more of that digital control, that digital feel that I'm used to. I do need to start using the actual colors to shade. But until then I like this crutch. It's pink and pretty. I recently did get some more markers to add to my collection and boy am I so glad I did because now I finally have a colorless blender! Which just made it nice to smooth out some of the edges here. I do not know why my camera bounces around. It only shows up when you speed it up. I'm gonna have to keep experimenting and try to fix that because it's so annoying. And there's people outside being loud. Added more glow with some yellow and green markers. Added some highlights on other characters. Warmed up some tones. I just really like the adding of colors with markers afterwards. Just brightens up in ways that I think I'm scared to do with the the watercolors. Of course here I come with my white ink. I couldn't find my tiny paintbrush so I wound up doing it with one of my calligraphy pens so my lines wound up finer than they do on a lot of my art but also this wasn't a very big painting so I'm kind of okay with that. Just crisping up some edges and making some things stand out. You know, like I do. Adding some more glowy, pretty things. Random lines everywhere, because random lines always make things better for whatever reason. Polka dots and scratches. Yeah. 
this is pretty cool. I think it turned out pretty nice. I really enjoyed this one. I've always had a special place in my heart when it comes to creature design. I don't know why I don't have more random creature design videos on YouTube because it's something I do enjoy so much. Maybe it has to do with the fact that I'm self-conscious and I feel like there's so many people out there who do it so much better than me. I mean, it's not particularly true because everyone's different and art is cool. But maybe this will be the start of a new thing. I really enjoyed it. I want to do more. I want to dive into more. I really like doing the environment and pushing myself to do an environment, especially with some bit of perspective and composition involved and lighting effects. I want to practice doing more lighting effects and really push colors and lighting and, and all those things that I'm always teaching in class, but I never do myself because I'm, I'm, I'm a good art teacher and I'm an okay artist, but I can never take what I teach people and use it for some reason. Because I'm lazy. That's the answer. Anyway, if you liked today's video, please hit that subscribe button or that like button or both. Uh, let me know what you think about my random creatures here and I have no idea what these kind of things would be called. So if you have any idea for a name, for either the moth cats or the moth unicorn, or both, uh, comment below, because I have no stinking clue. Well, thank you for watching today, and I uh, hope you have a good evening. Bye. What? I'm recording right now, bud.